Hello there everyone, it's UXW Bill here once again, and this video is by request of YouTube user Rich6955. Hopefully I've gotten that username right. They asked if I could do a video showing how and uh, what I was going to do to clean the heads in this reel-to-reel -reel tape machine. Now the procedure is not that much different from, say, cleaning the heads in a cassette tape deck or even an 8-track player or anything like that. Basically, you have to find the heads and you have to have the appropriate materials to clean them. Another thing I've done tonight, my cardboard box that I had in my bedroom is now gone. As someone once said of the 9-volt batteries that were holding up the stereo receiver on the cardboard box, it's an honorable hack, but it's one whose time has passed. I finally went down the hall and into the linen closet and got a proper little end table to put my stereo receiver of the day on. So now I have something that doesn't require any 9-volt batteries to hold it up. Anyway, I'm going to make this video pretty short and sweet and to the point because I've actually got an eBay auction that has about 10 minutes left on it as of the time I'm shooting this, and I don't want to miss out on the end in case someone tries to snipe what I'm going after away from me. Basically, you need two things in order to do this. Well, three things. First thing you need is some kind of a tape machine. Second thing you need is some isopropyl alcohol. The higher the percentage, the better. Ideally, you should use at least 70, but if you can get 91 or even 99%, use that, because the less water there is in it, the better. The less chance of you making something in your tape transport rust. And then, of course, you also need some cotton swabs. And these don't have to be anything special, just reasonably decent quality cotton swabs that you can get at a Walmart, at a pharmacy, probably the dollar store, anywhere in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these heads first. Now every part of the tape path here needs to be cleaned. These little uh, fixed cap stands here, not sure it's the term I want to use. This little pin right here, these, that, this. You don't want to mess with the pads because those might uh, have some adhesive on them that would come off. You also want to be careful not to foul up the uh, alignment screws for the heads, which you can see sitting right there because then you might have to realign your machine and I don't know what to tell you if you manage to do that, because I'm certainly not equipped to do it. And, of course, this over here, and the pinch roller, and this other fixed post right here. All this stuff has to be cleaned. So basically what I do is I take the isopropyl alcohol, and there's not enough left in there really to... to uh, I'm going to have to get some more of this stuff. But I'm going to very carefully, without hopefully without dumping it all over the... Uh, tape deck, although he who holds it right over the tape deck probably gets everything that he has coming to him. I'm going to go in here, turn on the little handy cam light so you can better see what I'm up to, and I guess I'll start with the heads first. I'm just going to take this moistened cotton swab here and rub it on the head. And you can see already that the head is looking better than it did. It's certainly looking better than its two counterparts over here. Look at all the grime that came off of that thing. Maybe, maybe it'd do better if I turned the, the light off on the Handycam. Yep, there you can see it. All those years of shed tape oxide that have come off of tapes that were played in this thing. That head could probably use a little more cleaning than that, even. But I'll just keep doing that until eventually that thing is fairly shiny and the crud quits, quits uh, coming off of it. Getting closer, but I'm not there yet. Some of this stuff might take a fair amount of cleaning to really get it looking good again. Now that is what I would really <laughs> call an improvement. That's right, no pun is too lame around here. Now what I did, just to recap, clean this solid post that the tape runs against. Clean this uh, little fella right here, this thin little post right here. You gotta be careful with that one because it could be bent. Clean this. This, the three heads, all of these guides in here, a driven capstan over here, the pinch roller. You can see the pinch roller. Not quite as clean as I'd like to have it. I'm going to give it a little more attention, but it's a million times better than what it was. This little post over here needs a little more, little more cleaning action. I ain't quite. I must have missed it or forgotten it or something. Now these heads are not in quite as good a shape as I thought. I think they're still quite serviceable because the gap that they have, I can't actually feel it, but you can see that shiny spot on each one of them. There is some wear on those heads. So 
they're not they're not in the best shape ever but they should still be quite serviceable you can also see and that's just a small number of uh, the cotton swabs or q-tips that I used but you can certainly see that some parts of this machine were impressively impressively filthy so I have no doubt in my mind that its audio performance should be considerably improved and of course I should go over the rest of it with some kind of a general purpose cleaner just to get everything that uh, isopropyl alcohol is not suitable for. Now the person who made the uh, video request, uh, Rich6955, I hope I'm still getting that right, also asked if I could do a demonstration of demagnetizing and I certainly can. However, I believe this would be the first video where I've run the demagnetizer with a magnetic tape handycam in my hands. Now, I don't think the magnetic field is strong enough to bother the handycam, but I guess if you don't get to see that part in the video, you'll know what happened. <laughs> now, I'm going to go ahead and do the demagnetization of the heads here, and I'm going to make sure to keep this uh, demagnetizer, when it's powered on, as far away from the handycam as possible, because although I don't think it'll hurt anything, I'd rather not put that to a test. But here is the Sony HE2 head demagnetizer, so old that it was distributed by SuperScope, which at one time was the importer for all products Sony here in the United States. Now, the way to start with this thing is to get it far, far away from the reel-to-reel -reel machine itself and to pull the handycam back. Go ahead and turn the power on. Now, You've got to strike a balance here between doing a sufficient job and keeping this thing on for too long because it's got a duty cycle. Usually it's rated for about two minutes on time and maybe eight to ten minutes off so it can cool down. Otherwise it might overheat and it'd melt the uh, windings inside and then it would be not a head demagnetizer but a piece of junk. So I'll go ahead and turn it on here from far away. It has no power light but I can feel it humming. And I just slowly, 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 that is the key word to any of this, bring it in to the tape heads and the tape path. And I just gently bring it up to the major functional components of the tape deck. Now the key word here is slowly, because if you go too fast, you will make the magnetization problem worse. Maybe even much worse. Don't confuse this thing with a tape bulk eraser either. I've used a tape bulk eraser. I have a powered one from the Amplifier Corporation of America that um, is extremely powerful. You plug it into the wall. You see I'm just gradually taking that thing away here and when I'm a couple feet away as far as my arm span and the power cord will let me get I can go ahead and shut it off but I have a, I have a bulk tape eraser there I shut it off it's electrically powered from the Amplifier Corporation of America you do not want to use one of those to perform this task because you could really really mess things up you could destroy delicate assemblies and uh, put a permanent mag magnetization on something that's not supposed to be magnetized in its normal course of operation. That said, I have used that thing to degauss monitors that were especially badly magnetized. There you have it. I'll do a demonstration of the audio quality later because it's fairly late at night and I kinda wanna go have my dinner. It's too late to be eating but I didn't have it earlier so I guess I've gotta have it now because I'm certainly not gonna miss it. Not that I look like the kinda guy who'd be harmed by missing a meal by anyone's definition. But there you have it, cleaning the tape heads and demagnetizing them on the three-head solid-state stereo tape deck from Allied Radio, model TD-1099. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment.